Welcome to When Nerds Learn to Fly. In this busy, chaotic world of ours, sometimes you need to get away from the traffic and the hustle and the bustle and your computers and get out in nature. And not all of us have a park nearby or some sort of place that we can go to get out in nature, but you can create your own natural habitat in your backyard. Here are a few of the things that you need to be able to achieve that. One of the things you need is a source of water. We built a pond, which we have koi and goldfish in. It doesn't have to be anything quite as elaborate as ours is. Ours is probably 1,200 gallons or so. We built the little Thai temple in the corner just as an accent point, and we can actually have water come up through the center of it and down the sides. We have the fish, so you can sit out here and enjoy the fish while, while you feed them and enjoy this, this natural habitat. But one of the things that animals need is a source of water. It can be a small tray or even a bird bath or something as large as a pond. Trees help. They hide them from predators. So we have a couple of large trees here in the backyard, but we also have smaller plants underneath. This layering looks nice in landscaping, but it also gives a place for the animals to find retreat. The birds can hide in it. It also makes great nesting materials for them. It allows any of the squirrels or anything else to kind of hide in this lower level brush. You also need a place for them to eat. Now this can be done in a couple of ways. If you have some trees that are nut bearing or fruit bearing, they can get their food straight from nature. Or you can put out bird feeders. You also should have some flowering plants because you want to bring in all of your pollinators, your bees, your butterflies, and even hummingbirds. During the time of year that the hummingbirds are here in Florida, we end up putting up hummingbird feeders, but we also have plants like firecracker plants and different kinds of plants that are specific to hummingbirds. We have also put up a squirrel nest box. We did try a bat house for a while, but we don't have enough large bodies of water that bats really are in our area. Those are a fantastic animal to have around because they get rid of mosquitoes. They are the largest eater of mosquitoes that you could possibly imagine. Again, if we had a large body of water, maybe we could get purple martins in. They also are great mosquito eaters. Animals are very self-sufficient. They'll build their own homes. We've got squirrel nests in all of our trees and bird nests everywhere. But you can also provide bird houses, different bird houses for different types of birds. Now, sometimes this fails miserably. We built some houses that were specific to the Carolina wrens, and they ended up building on a shelf in a planter that we have instead of building in the birdhouses we have. The squirrel nest box, the squirrels have chewed on it to no end, and I think we had a couple of younger squirrels live in it for a short period of time. Another great thing to have for the animals in your yard is enrichment. Animals, just like humans, get bored sometimes. And if it's just a simple feeder that there's no challenge to, uh, sometimes they will get bored with that. We have put out different things to kind of challenge the squirrels that have come into the yard with uh, swings and spinners. And strangely enough, the number of squirrels have increased since we've done that. So I'm thinking that that enrichment, that challenge has has brought on something a little extra for them to enjoy. After a short period of time, you'll notice that they start to get used to you. If you're coming out into the yard with them and watching them and enjoying their antics, after a while, they'll get to where they come right up to you. A couple of days ago, I had a Carolina wren fly within an inch of my nose, which for me, it seems like the, the birds are the more challenging. They're, they're a little bit skitt more skittish than the squirrels are. But having a Carolina wren come within that close to my face was just amazing. Uh, we also have them come to the door to let us know that there's no food in the feeders. We've got a couple of squirrels that will jump on the French doors to notify us that things are empty. We have 
a cardinal that will come up to the door, land on the handle, land on the door to let us know that they're expecting some food. So just with a little extra effort, you can have this close relationship with nature in the middle of suburbia. When we go on vacation, neighbors volunteer to feed our fish because they like to sit by the pond, drink a glass of wine, feed the fish, and just be out in nature. All animals really need in a backyard habitat is food, water, shelter. You can make your backyard into a backyard habitat and at the same time make it a vacation spot for yourself. That natural habitat isn't just for the animals, it's for you too. Hey Tony, there's another one over there. Yeah, they've been watching us for quite some time. Hey, uh, me and the crew, we ain't gonna mug you or nothing, so just uh, click that subscribe button. We could use the spare change. Go ahead and uh, do that so we can keep those peanuts flowing. Thank you.